We'll next uh, tell a few tales because one of my lifelong friends, Craig Fairclough, has been such a tease and we've had so many experiences together that I'll tell some of those experiences. Some of my earliest memories were of uh, Craig's mother, Mabel, coming over to get him at my house when we were playing and Craig, uh, and, and there were other people out there. I remember my mother being there and uh, I was there and maybe there were others, but uh, Mabel said, come on, Craigie, it's time for us to go. And Craig says, no, I'm not going. And, and Mabel reached for him and he started running around, running around the uh, picnic table, round and around, and then he'd go the other way when she'd come the other way and she could outrun him. And finally she gave up and left. And I, and my mother said, if I had been his mother, I would have spanked him a good one had I caught him. Uh, the other thing Craig used to do, and he did this many, many times, is we'd be over at his house playing. His mother would be gone somewhere. When, uh, when she would come home, she'd say, Craigie, did you practice your trombone? And he'd say, yes, mother. He'd, she'd say, how, did you practice for a half hour? Well, I don't know, mother. Well, how long did you practice? I don't know, mother. And he would just go on like that. And she'd say, okay, go out and play. And that's how he would get out of uh, practicing on the trombone. We had a tree hut that was in my yard, and I was the, the chief architect. I would always uh, design where we'd put the scraps of lumber and our used uh, bent nails that we would straighten out, and occasionally a few new nails. And we, we decided we'd put in a secret trap door in the, in the tree hut. So we put in a, a secret trap door. It was, it was in the bottom, and we got our saw in there, and we, we cut the door, and we got a couple of hinges, and we had it all carpeted in there. We were just little kids about... Uh, seven, eight, nine years old, and we had it all carpeted, and we just got the trap door all finished, and we folded it up, and, and one of us went down, and, and uh, no sooner did, uh, did we drop out of the secret trap door than we looked over, and right next door, 30 feet away, was Kathy Soderberg, and our secret trap door was no secret any longer. This is the story of the inept young smokers. One time when Craig Fairclough and I were coming home from Sherman Elementary, and we always walked up 33rd South, we found a, a uh, half a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes, and we laughed all the way home. We picked them up, and we, we uh, weren't sure what we were going to do with them, but by the time we got home, uh, we thought it was time, being age seven or eight, whatever we were, that we tried smoking. So we, we didn't really want to smoke, but we got to Craig's house. His mother was gone, and so we uh, decided that we'd get a straw. And we didn't didn't know the first thing about smoking and never did learn, thank goodness, but we we got a straw, we got the, the cigarettes out, and it was a three-handed operation because one one person had to hold the straw and the cigarette out from there, and then the other person had to light it. But we were so inept that we thought you had to blow. So so while we were blowing, I forget who tried first, but we would we would hold the cigarette up there by the straw and we would blow on it and blow and we'd light it and the match would finally burn out and we'd light another match and we never ever got those lit and that's the closest to smoking that we ever got. One time Craig decided that it was uh, a real good idea that we should uh, secretly tape record our girlfriends while we were on a date with them so it was uh, Craig Fairclough and Jane Ridd and I think uh, let's see it would have been uh, Pauline Kandik and, and myself so we decided that the way we do this and get a, at least a good 20 minutes of recording is we'd go to the pizza parlor uh, down on 20th East. Uh, we decided that we'd get the pizza, we'd take it home, but we uh, said, we'll go. Craig had it all set up in advance. He had the recorder under his seat. He knew just how to turn it on. He'd already tested it. So they said, uh, we said, uh, We'll go in, we'll order the pizza, we'll wait for it. So we, we went in, he turned on the recorder, we went in and waited, and so we had 20 solid minutes of recording while we were in the pizza parlor. We came out and it was just a little too muffled. We heard a few things and a little bit of juicy stuff, but not too much. Well, the girls found out, they finally, we were uh, so silly about it, I guess, so we were about 16 or 17, I guess, that uh, a couple of weeks later, in the, and it was in the winter, they tape recorded us, and uh, uh, they didn't get much either, except I remember as soon as they left the room, they had the recorder going down in uh, Ridd's basement. Craig said, oh, I've got to take a leak so bad, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's all they got on the recording. They didn't get anything about girlfriends or boyfriends or anything else like that. 
One morning when we were uh, probably in, uh, in about fifth grade or so, we came out to uh, uh, go to <clears throat> go to school and just as we stepped out on the back porch we were just in time to see Bert Faircloth, Craig's father, uh, jump into his old uh, uh, poorly painted uh, Beater 51 Chev that was just strictly transportation, that's all it was. He got in there to, to drive away and uh, and uh, pretty quick he got right back out and, we and he started laughing, he looked and someone had uh, overnight had blocked his car up on cinder blocks stolen all four wheels and rims and he just stood there and laughed. I thought it was a good sense of humor even though he'd lost some tires. It was a, a pretty amusing little story we thought. We were always trying to figure out how we could tease Craig because he always teased us. So one time uh, after Joan and I were married at her parents house they had soft water and uh, I wasn't familiar with soft water neither was Craig and so of course, when you, uh, when you use soft water and you wash your hands, it feels like the soap doesn't ever quite come off. So I said to Craig, come on over here and try this soap. We've got some special soap and you get it on your hands and it won't ever come off. And so he came over and he got his hands in there and he started washing his hands. And, and uh, of course, they, were, they felt slick and they never did feel like uh, the soap was gone. And then we just all started to laugh and he, uh, we had a joke on him there. Uh, one of the one of my embarrassing moments, uh, Craig and I both joined uh, Delta Sigma Pi, the business administration fraternity up at the University of Utah, and uh, it was our job to uh, off and on to line up speakers to come and speak, businessmen that would uh, tell us young business students uh, how things really were. So we invited one of our uh, former Aaronic Priesthood uh, leaders, Len Broadbent, to come and speak. Craig had lined him up. Len Broadbent was uh, one of the founders of a uh, home office insurance company. And when he came to the business uh, fraternity to speak that night, after he spoke, uh, I went up and I had two thoughts in my head. I had, you're not looking any older and you're looking as young as ever. But what I said was, you're not looking any younger. <laughs> And Craig, of course, uh, always tried to make things worse if he could put one on somebody. So he started laughing like crazy, and I just was just as embarrassed. I was as red as Santa Claus's suit. Uh, one, one time that we got Craig uh, at our study group meetings, the, the women, of course, always fix uh, some uh, dessert and something to drink. And this one time at somebody's house, I forget whose, they had, someone had accidentally, instead of buying a gallon of apple cider, had bought a gallon of uh, uh, cider vinegar. And uh, so when they, when they discovered that that was the case, they decided that they would pour the glasses full and serve to the men anyway. So they uh, poured uh, all six glasses of, uh, of uh, vinegar and served it. Well, Craig was, Craig was the first and he, <laughs> he, he took a huge swig of it. Honey, I can still see his face this day. It was, oh, he just went. But he, he kind of withheld himself because he, he wanted all the rest of us men to experience the exact same thing. So he, he, uh, he withheld uh, anything. But, but as soon as uh, some of us saw his face, then we looked in the kitchen and there were, there were six heads right against the edge of the kitchen. Just they started laughing like crazy and we had a, a pretty good one on Craig. <laughs> Those are, uh, there is one other story on Craig that I do want to tell. Uh, he had a girlfriend that was, uh, uh, just when we were sophomores, it was right between our, just our sophomore year, and we decided that we would toilet paper Lorraine Peterson's house this one night. Well, the problem was, we were sleeping out that summer night, uh, but the problem was her father would get home between about uh, 1.30 and 2 o'clock and we weren't exactly sure what time he'd get home. We didn't want to get there when somebody was still awake. So we waited till 2 o'clock, went down there, had our rolls of toilet paper, and uh, <clears throat> we uh, proceeded to uh, do the, the, the lights went out. We waited 10 minutes so they could be fast asleep. And we started toilet papering and we, we ran out of toilet paper. So we went uh, back to his house, got some more toilet paper, parked, of course, a few houses away, and just had started on the second round of toilet papering when all of a sudden Craig says, it's the cops! <coughs> so we, we dove in behind some bushes in the backyard and we, we just laid there with our heads down and we were 
breathing kind of heavy. I think we were scared more than tired. <coughs> and we just said to ourselves, wow, we've got to, we've got to watch. We just laid there till the heat was off and the, the police seemed to drive away and boy, we beat it down to the car and that was the, that was the next to last time I ever toilet papered. Uh, later in the stories here, I'll tell about the last time I toilet papered. So those are some of the stories of uh, Craig Faircloth, my good friend and world-class teaser.